everyone, welcome to part two of my in-depth review of the new Skitari Codex. Adeptus Mechanicus is now in 40k and it's awesome and I love it. I will be collecting an army in the future. Probably not right now. Won't be the most responsible thing to do, but it'd be fun. It'd be the most fun thing to do. We'll see. I really like the Metallica. It's called Metallica anyway, but Metallica color scheme is pretty cool. So, in this video I'll be covering the troops and the elites, which sums up to three different squads. There are no HQs in this codex. Mm -mm. And we're going to go in a lot of detail because everything that I'm going to mention is new. None of it is bolter, you know, so I'll be going over each thing in some detail and the points associated with it and everything. So, uh, yeah, so I've already got my first reviews. I think this, my first, sorry, my first impressions, this codex, they're going to be really fast and some good shooting. I don't know if they'll be able to compare with like Eldar shooting or maneuverability, but I think it'll be good supplemental army to certain things. You could run it as a whole 1850 list. It'd be kind of fun, but, uh, I don't know. I think they're going to have problems against certain armies. Yeah. We'll just talk about that in a few minutes. So, um, leading the troops is the Skatari Vanguard. For 55 points, you get a uh, Force Skatari Vanguard and a Vanguard Alpha. Now, as I said, you don't get an, an HQ, so your Warlord will have to be an upgraded Sergeant. Um, and you have better traits of certain guys. So, let's go over the Skatari Vanguard stat line. Weapon skill 3, so not as good in close combat. They're not designed for close combat. Ballistic skill 4, which is awesome, especially when you combine it with their Doctrine and Imperatives, which you can get them up to Ballistic skill 6 for one turn. Uh, 5 for a turn. I think even 7 for a turn. Yeah, like it's crazy. Uh, let me just review these. So the Imperatives, remember you can boost their Ballistic skill? Yeah, you can get their Ballistic skill up to 7. That's pretty awesome. Uh, strength 3, Toughness 3, right? That makes sense. One wound, initiative three, one attack, leadership eight, four up save. So they're not designed for to be in close combat. That you want them at a small distance and to shoot your opponent to shreds. Makes sense. And then there's also the Vanguard Alpha. The big difference between the Vanguard Alpha and the, the Skatari Vanguard is that he has one more wound and one more uh, attack and one more leadership. He's like a sergeant. And their war gear, they have Skatari War Plates, which is a four up armor save. And they also have the Radium Carbine. Now this is their base gun. It's called the Radium Carbine, people. It is an 18-inch gun. Strength 3, AP 5, Assault 3, Rad Poisoning. So it's good for killing hordes, essentially. It'll be really good against Tyranid Gaunts. Uh, it has Rad Poisoning. And uh, when firing a weapon that has a special rule, oh, to wound roll 6 causes an additional wound. Or sorry, so it basically causes two wounds on the target unit, regardless of the target's toughness. Each wound is allocated and saved against separately. So, uh, basically, they can shoot anything. And they have, like, it's kind of like the Eldar can wound anything on a six, but they're, they also have rending. These guys don't. But on a six to wound, regardless of the toughness, it causes two wounds. So you can take down toughness eight monstrous creatures eventually with these guys. Eventually is the keyword because they're going to get their armor saves as well. So yes, you can get through toughness 6 and 7 and 8 and you're going to cause wounds, but the person will need to fail their armor saves. And that's a huge difference between this codex and the Eldar codex and this codex and the Necron codex. Necrons automatically wound on a 6 against guys. So it's better than the Necrons, weaker than Eldar in my opinion. I'd rather go through the armor save with a rend then, or whatever they have the equivalent of, you know, and um, cause two armor saves, personally. Um, unless it's against something that's like a demon, I guess it has a low armor save or something, but uh, yeah. And there's special rules, they have Doctrina Imperatives, which is, I went over the Doctrines in the previous one. A 6-up Feel No Pain, which probably won't come into effect, maybe it will, maybe you'll get lucky, roll a few 6s, keep guys alive, they're only toughness 3. So you're going to find that they get mowed down really easily. Um, anything toughness, you know, strength six or higher, instant kills them, so no feel, no pain. And uh, they're only, you know, bolter fire is probably going to wipe these guys out really easily. Heavy bolter fire will really wipe these guys out. You'll have basically rolling feel, no pains for their lives. So we'll see. They have relentless, which makes sense. They can move and shoot these heavy weapons. And they also have rad saturation 
which, while a unit is locked in combat with one or more models with the special rule, all models in that unit subtract one from their toughness to a minimum of one. So if your opponent is locked in with them, they have minus one toughness. Cool, because they're only strength three, so it really helps them wound their opponent in close combat. Again, these guys are designed to kill from afar, not or middle range. They're not designed to be in close combat. You can include up to five additional Skatari Vanguard for nine points each. Remember, you can have up to like eight squads in your normal force organization chart detachment uh, for nine points each. And so they're not that expensive. Nine points isn't bad. I find this actually pretty... It's a pretty good... I would have put these guys at eight or nine points, I'd say. Because they're only toughness three, strength three. Um, they're, they're shooting, right? So they're, they're kind of like Tau Fire Warriors in their... In their um, in their stat line. The Vanguard Alpha may take items from the ranged weapons, melee weapons, special issue warrior, or relics of, Mar of Mars lists. Now, I've already gone over the relics. So let's go over the ranged weapons then, shall we? You can get a Phosphor Blast Pistol for 5 points, which is a range 12, strength 5, AP4 pistol, which has that Luminagon special rule again. Um, Radium Pistol, which is strength, 12, eight, strength 3, AP5 pistol, rad poisoning. Or Arc Pistol for 10 points, which is Strength 6, AP5, Pistol, Haywire. That's the one I'd go to instantly. Um, a Short Range Pistol, just in case if your opponent happens to get close to you. A Haywire Pistol will do things to vehicles. None of the, the rest of the squad shooting will do anything to vehicles, basically. Uh, it's Strength 3. No. So Haywire Pistol would be great. The Melee Weapons Choices. You can take a Taser Goad, a Power Sword, or an Arc Maul. Taser goad for 10 points, which is strength plus 2. Melee taser. Which, um, to go over the taser rule again. Uh, every to 6 wound. I think that's, yeah. Let me go over the taser rule again. Let's see. Oh, that's okay. We went over the previous one, but I just want to, I'm curious about the taser table of contents. Here we go. Uh, arc weapons. Oh, it's okay. Hmm. All right, so it was an arc mall. Taser weapons. So taser weapon uh, have two profiles. No, those are taser weapons. Oh yeah, taser. When making an attack with a special rule that has this special rule to hit rolls of six causes two additional hits on the target. So it's like Tesla. That makes sense. It's Taser's Tesla. That makes sense. Okay, so Taser's Tesla. Let's go back to them. Um, okay, so that's not bad. That's not bad. There's the Power Sword, which is just, you know, a normal Power Sword, Strength User, AP3, Melee, or Arc Ball, Strength Plus 2, AP4, Melee, because of Haywire. So again, close combat hitting thing. You may want to include that if you really want some close combat hitting against vehicles. These guys are going to have problems against vehicles. It's basically that. You're going to have to use your other guys to kill vehicles. These guys are not going to be the ones killing vehicles. There's also Special Issue War Gear, which you can get a Refractor Field for 5 points, Conversion Field for 10, or Digital Weapons for 10. It may not be taken by a model equipped with a Refractor Field. You cannot take a conversion field and a refractor field in the same model. So refractor field gives a 5 up invulnerable save. Cool. Um, I think that's just the guy. Conversion field gives a 4 up invulnerable save. At the end of a phase in which the bearer passes one or more invulnerable saves granted by the conversion field, all units within d6 inches of the bearer must test as if they had been hit by a weapon with a blind special rule. Friendly units can reroll this test. Okay. And digital weapons uh, can reroll a single fail to wound in each assault phase. So, again, I think the 4 up invulnerable save is the way to go if you want to take any of them. 10 points, not bad. One Skatari Vanguard may carry one of the following. Now, this is where you got to give... You, these are the important weapons. An enhanced data tether. Whenever a unit with enhanced data tether is affected by a doctrine imperative, all models in that unit add one to their leadership characteristic on their profile until the start of the next turn. No, this is not cumulative with the effects of broad spectrum data tether or an omnispex, which cover saves taken against attacks made by this unit that contains at least one model equipped with the omnispex are made at minus one modifier. That's huge. That one I would include in most lists because these guys want to keep at a distance and they want to shoot. Um, 
Omnispecs would keep them alive. I'm sorry, not keep them alive. We'll kill your opponents. So that keeps your guys alive. Up to two other Skitari Vanguard may replace their radium carbines with one of the following special weapons lists. An arc rifle, a tran, uh, for five points, a trans ceramic arcobus for 25, or a plasma quick caliber for 30. The arc rifle is 24 inch range, strength six, AP five, rapid fire haywire. So again, popping vehicles at a range, awesome sauce. A trans ceramic arcobus is 60 inch range, strength X, AP three, heavy one, armor bane sniper. Again, popping vehicles. Or a plasma caliber, strength 7, AP2, 18 inch range, assault 3 gets hot. Now, I don't like that one. I'm not a big fan of that one. Because with assault 3, the odds are you're going to kill yourself. Um, now, obviously, it's going to be nice. One shot, base, predict death. Because with assault 3, you're going to roll a dice, and the odds of basically getting a 1 on 3 dice is basically 50 50. So, and on top of that, you have 50 50 armor save. So, a quarter of the time, you're just going to die. But it's pretty good. You know, you'll kill three things, or two things, I guess, when you hit them. And if you buff... The, the way that I would do that is to... If you're using that weapon, use the one that buffs you up to uh, Ballistic Skill 7. And that way, you can reroll the first ones, and that really decreases your chances of, of... It gets hot. And then that way, you can keep your guys alive and pop some Terminators. So I definitely take those special... Of two of the other uh, Skitari Vanguard, i definitely take that. Maybe Mac Min Squads with those would be pretty nasty. If the squad members 10 models, one additional Skitari Vanguard may replace his Raiding Carbine with one of the spe special weapons list, which is the same three. So if you have a 10-man squad, you have three of those Assault 3 Plasma Guns that are 18-inch range. So pretty cool. Cool stuff, and that's the Skitari Vanguard. Up next, we have the Skitari Rangers. For 65 points... For 65 points, you get uh, four Skitari Rangers and a Skitari Alpha, Ranger Alpha. And you, you can include up to five additional Skitari Ranger, Rangers at 11 points a model. They have the same stat line as the other guys. Uh, weapon skill three, bliss skill four, strength toughness three, one wound, initiative three, one attack, leadership eight, four below save. Same war gear, Skitari Warplate, and a Galvanic Rifle. Sorry, they have a Galvanic Rifle, which is better. It's a 30-inch gun, strength four, AP4, rapid fire, precision shots. So that's good. That's a better gun. I like the Skitari Rangers more than the Vanguard for that reason. Longer range, so it means you can keep your opponent farther away. Better AP on your guns. So they'll be taking out a lot of good things. You know? And they also have Doctor Imperatives, Feel No Pain, 6 Up, Move Through Cover, and Relentless. Uh, the Skitari Vanguard did not have Move Through Cover, they had Rad Saturation. So, they may take items from the ranged weapons, which are the same ones, the, the Phosphor, Radium Pistol, or Arc Pistol, which we went over. Melee weapons, Special Glory, or Relics of Mars. One Skitari Ranger may take the following, the Enhanced Data Tether, or the Omnis Specs, and they, up to two Rangers may replace the Galvanic Rifles with one of the following, Arc Rifle, trans, uh, Transurenic Arcabus, Plasma Caliber, for 30 points. So that's it, basically. They're like the they're like the Vanguard very closely. And if you have a squad of 10 models, you can replace a third one with that. So, with one of those same guns. So good stuff there. And once again, I think it's a pretty good appropriate point cost. 11 points. So these guys have better guns. They're better than the Vanguard, in my opinion, because you can take longer range guns base, and that's pretty sweet. Um, I really like the Omnispecs, which, did not, which reduces cover by one. I think that's going to be an automatic include in most lists, because your opponent, if you're running against an opponent that fears those guns, uh, they're going to hide in cover. And if they don't fear the guns, they're just going to run at you anyway. So um, it's always good to, to deny cover and remove... You know, minus one modifier to cover is huge. Also on top of that, the special weapons lists, I really like any of them, are actually pretty sweet. You know, um, I prefer the 24-inch range, Strength 6, AP5, Rapid Fire, Haywire. Or the um, the Plasma Caliber, providing you take the precautions and maybe bump their Ballistic Skill to reroll that first round of ones. Uh, so it's uh, so that way you keep yourself alive from the It Gets Hot rule. Uh, assault 3, like if you put three of those in a squad, they'll wipe out Terminators like no one's business. They'll wipe out anything like no one's business. Squad of Marines, gone. Squad of Terminators, gone. Squad of anything, basically, gone. Strength 7, AP 2, that's what you need to kill the hot, like the, the Wraith lists. This is what you need to fight them. Um, this will, will 
be what puts the fear of God into the Wraith lists because now you can get through their armor and wound them. Pretty sweet stuff. And finally, we'll go through the elite slots. Now, this is the R Securian Rust Stalkers. I love the look of them. They're the guys in the cool moon boots. And uh, they're better. In, they have a better weapon skill. They're more close combat oriented, obviously. For 160 points, you get four Securian Rust Stalkers and one Priceps, they're called. Princeps. Princeps is the leader. And they have a different stat line than the other guys. They have weapon skill four, plus skill four. Strength, four. Toughness, three. Two wounds each. Initiative four. Two attacks. Leadership eight. Four up save. The Rust Stalker Princeps has a better um, leadership. That's it. Other than that, they're all identical in stat line. So they have better weapon skill, better toughness, or sorry, better strength, and double the wounds for 160 points. And you include up to five additional ones for 30 points each. Not bad. These guys have the Securian Battle Armor, which is a 4-up armor save with a 6-up invault. So that's better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 6-up invault to me is just like, okay. But they have Feel No Pain. A normal Feel No Pain. So that's not as, as crazy bad, you know, against a, a last, you know, against... Their own, their toughness 3, though. So that Feel No Pain will be negated a lot of the time. Most things that will go through their armor will deny Feel No Pain. But, uh, whatever. So, they have the Transonic Razor is their war gear. It is uh, melee, so it's an AP5, melee, and transonic. Transonic means when, waking, men, when making an attack with a weapon that has a special rule, any to wound roll of six automatically wounds the target regardless of toughness. In addition, during the first round of close combat, any to wound roll of sixes are resolved at AP2. During all subsequent rounds of the close combat, all wounds are resolved at AP2. I think it's a typo. That's probably going to be fixed soon. That's probably a typo. But it says, in addition, during the first round of close combat, any to wound rolls of six are resolved at AP2. During all subsequent rounds of close combat, all wounds are resolved. Oh, sorry. All wounds are resolved at AP2. That's weird, sir. All right. So they're better, and this is the game progresses. Never mind. That seems odd once I thought about it. So cool. So they have AP2 weapons. And... That's pretty sweet. And they won't wound anything on a six. So these guys are going to have to run in against those pesky wraith lists. They also have a cord claw, which is strength user, AP5, melee, molecular dissonance, transonic. Molecular dissonance means when a model equipped with a cord saw makes its close combat attacks, one of its attacks will be a dissonance attack. Roll this attack separately. A dissonance attack has the flesh bane special roll. Wounds on a two up. Okay. Transonic. When making an attack with a weapon that has any this special rule, any to wound roll of six automatically wounds the target regardless of toughness, in addition to AP2. Mind Scrambler Grenades. Shooting. When a unit armed with the Mind Scrambler Grenades makes a shooting attack, one model can choose to throw a grenade rather than using another shooting attack. It's an 8 inch range, strength X, AP4, assault 1, blast, neural trauma. Neural trauma means hits, cause of his weapon, always cause a wound on a 4 up. All right. Uh, an assault. They are strength three, AP four, haywire. Sweet. So cool stuff there. Special rules. They have bulky because they're big bases and giant things on their legs. Doctrine imperatives, obviously. And th these guys are going to be the opposite. You for these guys, you really want to buff their weapon skill because they're going to run at your opponent with a weapon skill. And the turn they assault in, you want, or maybe in the second round, but you want to just basically jump them at your opponent, catch them in close combat so they can't shoot you anymore. And then increase their weapon skills so that they hit on threes. Yeah. And uh, Dune Strider. Dune Strider is pretty cool. Uh, Dune Strider is the special rule that adds three inches to its maximum move distance when it moves into the movement phase, when it runs, and when it makes charge moves. Field of Aim. And Furious Charge. Cool. So the Dune Striders are fast. Oh. Yeah. So, it's going to be fast. They're going to be a fast army, as I said, because that's going to be pretty fast. Feel no pain and furious charge. And you can take up to five more for 30 points each. They can take special issue warrior relics of Mars. The entire squad may replace transonic razors, cords, claws, and mind scroll grenades with two transonic blades. Transonic blades for free. Transonic blades are strengthless user, or sorry, strengthless one, AP5, melee, transonic, and again, transonics are AP2. 
Cool. Or Rust Docker Princeps with the two transonic blades may also take a cord claw for five points. And a Rust Docker Princeps may take a prehensile data spike for ten. And a prehensile data spike, a strength user, AP5, melee, data spike, haywire, specialist weapon. Data spike, when a model equipped with a weapon that's the special rule, makes melee attacks, it makes an additional attack with his weapon on initiative 10 step. This does not grant the model an additional pile in. Cool. So it gives an extra attack at initiative 10. So that's it. That's the, um, that's the troops and the, no, that's not even the, all the elites. I have one more. All right, let's keep going. I should probably make two separate videos. It's okay. Uh, the other version of the Sicarian um, Rust Stalkers are the tran the Sicarian Infiltrators, and um, they have the same stat line as they did as the other guys. Uh, the Princeps gets an extra attack, and they have the four up armor save with a six up invulnerable save. They have a stub carbine which uh, is an 18 inch range, strength 4, AP dash, assault 3. Yeah, not too bad. And a power sword. So they're good in close combat, and they have some decent shooting. Um, they have the same rules as before, but they also have infiltrate and stealth, and neurostatic aura, which and all enemy models within 6 inches of one or more models with special rules subtract one from their weapon skill, both skill, initiative, and leadership. So again, they're pretty good. These guys combined with the other guys are going to be awesome, because they can hurt your opponent by... Jumping in close combat, tying them up and decreasing their leadership, decreasing their weapon skill, and awesome, awesome stuff there. For 185 points, you get four Securian Infiltrators and one Infiltrator Princeps, and uh, you take with five more for 35 points each. They have access to the Special Issue War Gear, Relics of Mars. The entire squad may replace their sub, stub carbines and power swords with flechette blasters and taser goads. And flechette blasters are strength, or sorry, range two, or sorry, range 12. Uh, strength two, Burst Pistol Shred. So it fires five shots when fired, but is otherwise treated as a pistol. So you get five times the shots, but it's strength two, so it's wounding anything on sixes at work, at least. And Shred, you can reroll. I don't know if I like that one. No. I don't know. And Taser Goats, which I've already gone over. And uh, an infiltrator princeps may take an inflos, info slave skull, which um, adds one of their leadership and gains acute senses. Not bad. So you can shoot, you know, that's it. So there we go. That is the elites section and the troop section. It's been a bit of a long video, but uh, it's okay. So what I think overall, I think the vanguards are cool. I really like the uh, rangers over the vanguard, but both of them are good. You know what, for 10 extra points, I'd go with the rangers personally. Better far-range guns, which is awesome, you know? These guys don't want to be in close combat. And then on the other end of the spectrum, the elites, the rust stalkers are awesome, but for an extra 25 points, infiltrators are pretty sweet too because they have power swords, and uh, they won't be able to wound the t high toughness things, which that will be going to the, the rust stalkers. So I definitely recommend a combination of rust stalkers and um, infiltrators, but the infiltrators will run at your opponent and decrease their skills, and then the rust stalkers as well can have fun. Yeah, so what do you guys think of the troops in the elite section of the new Skitari Codex? I think it's interesting. These guys are going to be really fast. I think they're going to be really fast because I think they're going to be heavily used. And the elite section, they're going to be fast and, and go after your opponent. So, yeah, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, do you disagree with me? Leave comments in the comment section down below what you think of the new Skitari Codex. And uh, stay tuned for the next part. We'll be going over the remaining sections. And thank you for watching. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.